Hi folks, welcome in to a dual edition podcast from the Football Ireland Jeff Ryan Bull Show. Michael McQueen, delighted to be joined by my comrade, my good friend, uh, a man hard to get a hold of these days, Jeff Ryan Bull. Jeff, uh, you are a man in demand, shall we say, these days. How are you doing? You good? Michael, I am a man in season these days. And you know what? We just finished training camp today. We're going to have our first team meeting here later this morning. Um, but it, how cool is it that we are drinking coffee together across the Atlantic Ocean, and we're going to talk football, take questions, and just uh, catch up. I, you know, it's been, it's been two weeks it's been now. Hectic, yeah, it's been hectic in training camp, and obviously it's tough to do a show through training camp, but we'll be doing this all the way through the season. And uh, I got to ask you, though, mm. you were at the Gaelic matches yesterday in Omaha. And oh, right. how, there we go. How did it, how did it go? I can't, get, say, I can't get the Gaelic scores over here. So you got to. I, I, I genuinely thought that you were going to say Omaha. I guess for people in even in the UK listening to this as well, I was at a Gaelic match yesterday. It's funny because I walked in, I ran into a um, big Patriots fan in, in Emmett Donlan who drove up from Longford. He was at your clinic two years ago, Jeff. His profile picture is you ho- holding him. So, uh, I'm sure he sends his regards. It was good crack. It's it's um just from what I can see, just in your background for people in Ireland, I presume in the UK as well at the minute and, and in Europe, the weather in Ireland this week is is superb. So um it's my hope to to edit this podcast and and get it up as quickly as possible and then go out in the sun. It's funny because like we you were saying off just off screen that yeah, obviously we're we're planning to continue doing these podcasts as much as possible. Um we were planning to go out live with us, but you know, uh, Jeff. Someday we're going to work out these technological advances. I mean, we we went on the stream yard or our system and uh, all I could hear was Jeff. I couldn't see him. So I'm just glad I can see you. Um, but it has like, and you're right though, it's been a busy two weeks. Like um, I've missed chatting to you generally because like literally like you've been so like not in the negative way, you've been so busy with training camp and that that's awesome that you are. But um, a lot has happened. It's it's mad that, you know, first off, um, we're in June. You know, like we are, cl- we are close now. And and look, I I know you guys get underway in Canada this week, but I'm saying in terms of the NFL, like we are, uh, we're getting a little bit closer now. And I think once we get over this month, this lull, it's back, isn't it? I mean, that's it. Yeah, you know, and everybody is is basically winding down their OTAs and off season programs, and the players are going to get a little bit of break before they go to camp. But I tell you, Mike, you, you know, you talk about pressure right now. One place where I, there has to be a tremendous amount of pressure. And I saw this morning that Josh McDaniel said he doesn't have any anxiety about Jimmy Garoppolo's foot and that he's not worried about it. And, you know, they're still targeting him to be ready for training camp and all stuff. You know, he may say that, but there is no way that, and I understand he's been in the building, but mm. there is no way that you can't be concerned about the fact that he's not been able to work out on the field. He, he hasn't been with in any through any of the team organized team activities, and you know that's going to be the guy that uh, you know is going to lead your football team. He, you know, and it takes time. And I think you know, I hope fans understand it. When you're you're a new quarterback in a system, not only do you have to learn the system, but you have to learn the nuances, all the players that you're playing with. I mean, he has to develop a rapport with, particularly Demonte Adams. And, you know, the rest of that football team, Michael Mayer, the new tight end they brought in from Notre Dame in the draft. And, and uh, so, you know, as a Raider fan, I, I'm, I'm concerned about it, whether Josh McDaniel says he's concerned about it or not. And I guess it's, it's almost turning into like, not the story of the off season, but it sort of is in the sense where it's so unusual that this would, that this news would come out a couple of months after he signs. Like I remember making the graphic of Jimmy G holding up the jersey in February time. You know, the Raiders do expect for him to be ready, but if for some reason, Jeff, if they, like, can you imagine a scenario where they get to the point, or I don't know what the exact date is, or, you know, just whenever training camp starts, and they and, and, and they check him out, and he still can't pass a physical. I mean, that that is concerning. It's concerning to the point of, you know, this would have been known at the time of signing, especially when you had different quarterbacks out there on the market. I know you had a chance to go around the facility in Vegas 
not too long before that and there were many questions being asked of that position we've seen Tom Brady is going to come in in some sort of you know minority ownership stake you take Garoppolo out of that and you got Brian Hoyer as QB1 yeah I mean it's not a great situation and and certainly there have to be questions asked about how could you sign a guy who apparently had had foot surgery and can't pass a physical um, normally when there's a trade made and I, I'm really curious to, to dig into this a little bit more normally when there's a trade made it's contingent upon that player passing the physical and if the, if you can't pass then the player reverts back to the previous team but um, that somehow this one slipped through the cracks and and certainly it's not a good look for the Raiders and it's not you know, it's not positive for, you know, the Raider football team because you want that guy, the face of your franchise, there working with your guys. And, and like I say, he's in the building. I know he's in the building, but being in the building and being on the field are two different things. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not a great way to start the, the Jimmy Garoppolo era in, in Las Vegas. Never mind the fact that that division for itself is stacked still, and you would yeah, expect I, Wilson to get better in, in Denver as well. So it's going to be a weird year for them. Yeah, I think it's been really interesting as I'm watching that division this off season. You know, um, obviously the Chargers feel like they're going to be better. Uh, Kansas City's stacked and just you know they they it's amazing they lose players and just find find more. You know, I, I think. They've done an outstanding job. Brent Beach, their general manager, is outstanding. Andy does a great job with his football team, obviously. But, you know, when you look at that division, Denver is the one that I've watched really closely this summer. And mm. I think that uh, you already see and feel the impact of Sean Payton on that franchise. Uh, I think he's kind of laid down the law if you will a little bit with the denver media and he's sending a message it's interesting you know the the really good coaches and he he comes from the parcells parcells tree and parcells was renowned uh you talk to the guys that coached with him played for him uh media guys that were around him that parcells was a master psychologist and he had a way of using the media to send the message that he wanted to send. And I think you're seeing the same thing with Sean Payton. There's no question that there's a new sheriff in town in Denver. I will tell what happens there. Hopefully in my sense of a fan, uh, I'd love to see a bit of movement there. We'll see. Um, I know I think there's been a lot of stuff happening. It's, it's mad, Jeff, in the, the, the myths and the depths of the, of the NFL offseason, especially post-draft and when it all dies down a bit just how much can happen, especially when we go two weeks from, from chatting to each other in this sense. Uh, we had Mina Kimes on the podcast the other day, and we, we asked her, where does she think DeAndre Hopkins will go? And it comes down to that, she's saying, it comes down to that whole conversation of, does he want to get paid? Does he want to win a ring? Where will he go? I mean, if you were you know, a guy with a crystal ball here, Jeff, and this is why I'm putting this out now, because we're putting this out the same day, and I don't think anything's going to happen today. Where where do you where do you see him going? Because like the, the whole OBJ situation has sort of screwed that contract up a little bit, especially even though it's a one-year deal in Baltimore. But you know, surely if I'm Hopkins now and I'm a free agent, I'm looking at the NFC and I'm looking at a team in the NFC. I'm not saying the Eagles, for example, but a team that's gonna be in that mix come December this year, come January next year, because the NFC is a far easier conference to get out of now. Have you any crystal ball or have you heard anything in your uh, many musings and dealings with, you know, GMs and execs, Jeff, over the last few weeks? Well, let, let, I think I want to address what Mina said first, right, um, about him wanting to either win a ring or get paid. Obviously, they all want both. I mm -hmm. mean, they want to get paid and they want to win a ring. The priority, I would think, for DHOP would be to go somewhere where he has a chance. And I, and I think you see this an awful lot with and it's hard to call him an older player but he is getting now to the second half of his of his the second act of his career you know they 
there, you know, the money is, is nice. The money's great. The money gives you the lifestyle. It gives you the opportunity to take care of your family, you know, and your kids, kids, and all of that. It's generational wealth. But the bottom line is for these guys, because they're all alpha males and they're all ultra competitive, that winning a championship is the biggest thing to be able to say you're a world champion, to stand underneath that confetti. Um, I, I think when you look at that and say, you know, look around, there's probably eight teams in the league that have a legitimate, you know, I think a legitimate claim to say that they can be Super Bowl champions. And, you know, that really limits your, that really limits your options, right? And, and maybe not eight teams, you know, obviously most of those reside in the AFC. And you know, you talk about the Eagles. I don't see how the Eagles could do that. Um, obviously, if they did, it, I mean, you're talking about a loaded football team. There's a lot of speculation about the Cowboys, you know, and, you know, you hear all these things about the Cowboys all the time about, you know, them chasing Derrick Henry, about them trying to load up one last time, you know, for Jerry, because, you know, Jerry's not getting any younger and he wants to, he wants to, just like the players, he wants to win a championship. Um, I don't see anybody in the NFC North that has a chance to, to do that. You look out West and, and uh, you know, I, I, I just, you know, again, it's, it's, it's kind of limited, really. I mean, the South is not, there's not a, there's not a team in the South that I've, there's no dominant team other than the Eagles. And I think the yeah. Cowboys are, Cowboys are about, the next best fit. I think we like. I, I've definitely got to find a way to fly out to Hamilton and we record a big season preview episode at some point. Don't know how we're going to make that work, but let me look into it and uh, stretch the finances and persuade you, you, the wife. You got to get. I, I tell you what, you got to get out here because I was talking to our friend Ben Mortimer for Touchdown Trips the other day, and I'm I'm going to just come out and give him a plug. He is putting together an unbelievable trip where you're going to see Penn State, you're going to see the Buffalo Bills, you're going to see the Baltimore Ravens, you're going to see Pittsburgh, and and you're going to see us. So I think I think it's going to be a, a – we're going to have Ben on the show later in the summer to talk about it, but I know he's already got over 20 people, you know, that have subscribed to his, uh, to his trip. So <laughs> look out for touchdown trips because they, they are putting – a Lollapalooza, a football palooza together. No, I would definitely love to do that, but I'd, I'd, I'd love to get out and see you before the summer's over, and I'm sure if they can persuade the powers that be um, that they could hey, we even, some joke. Hey, we even got Guinness in this town. Have, uh, really, yeah. On top or what's the crack there? Hey, hey, listen, you can get it any way you want it in this town. There's enough Irish Irish people in this town. You can find Guinness. All right, watch this space. Um, it's been two weeks. A lot of stuff has happened. Obviously, the... Um, Global markets campaign has happened and the Steelers were in Dublin a few weeks ago, but more so um, there has been obviously different teams, not just in Ireland, but in Europe, the UK as well. It's been a pretty mad time. Like, I mean, you were at the forefront of that back in the late 90s. What did you think of all the news that came out the last few weeks? I think it's been fantastic. I think what the NFL has done is, is uh, really smart, really smart. Give those teams an opportunity to claim uh, marketing territories. For the Steelers, Ireland is such a natural fit because of the Rooney family. You know, Mr. Rooney was once upon a time the United States embass emissary to uh, Ireland. That everybody's waking up this morning. The coffee shop's waking up. But you know, Mike, I, I think too, and, and congratulations to you because I understand that you're going to be involved with the Steelers and and helping them. Uh, make an imprint in the Irish market. And I know that that's, it's so good to see that happen because for so long, I think Ireland has been kind of overlooked. And I think what you people like yourself and, uh, you know, others have done is really wake up the NFL to the fact that there is a tremendous appetite for NFL football in Ireland and you know 
for the Steelers to come there and the Jags to come there, I think that's really uh, speaks a great deal about the level of you know interest and love of the game that there is in, in uh, the Emerald Isle. I mean, I think I think for a lot of people, even even looking back on it now, because it, it was weird. You were so busy doing other stuff. It was funny because you. FaceTime me the second the press conference starting as a man I can't talk I'll talk later it was funny but um yeah it's it's just it's weird like it's it's something I was saying to Mark Hogan about like there was a bit of a and for anyone listening to this from Ireland especially there was a bit of a buzz around Dublin but in media in like radio and stuff people were asking questions like is something going to happen the reality is the conversations are really only going to be starting now but I would be I don't think it would be a miss of me to say 23 or 24 minutes or whatever into a podcast that people can dig down if they want and call me out for it. But I think we'll get a game. I think we'll get a game in the next few years uh, as a one-off. And I think, you know, if, if the GA can be persuaded, and I, I know, Jeff, you've been to Crook Park before. So I think if that happens, it will happen as a one-off. And I don't think the Steelers come over all the way to Ireland for no reason. Um, I think it will happen before the end of the decade for sure, but probably the next three years. And when hey, it does, hey, you'll, you'll, you'll have to get over here if it does. Hey, remember now, when we did our Irish tour, and I believe it was in, it might have been Belfast or Dublin, I can't remember, but we got that question from the audience. And I remember saying, you're going to see an NFL game in Ireland. And I really, I don't think there's any question that the Steelers in Ireland is something that's going to happen. And, you know, the, when the commissioner talks about an entire European division and he talks about you know, expanding the footprint globally, um, it's just a natural. I mean, it's just a natural. And, and uh, you know, obviously with Croke Park, you've got an unbelievable facility that's that can handle the game, that can, you know, you look at Notre Dame and Navy is sold out uh, this, this coming summer. You know, so there's an appetite. There's a there's just tremendous appetite. The Steeler fans would travel in mass. Um, they travel as good as anybody in, you know, the, the Raiders travel well, the Cowboys travel well. There's a number of teams that travel well, but you know, Pittsburgh's fans are, you know, passionate, passionate fans. Tremendous amount of Irish, you know, bloodlines in in you know in Steeler fandom, and it's just a natural. It's to me, it's just good business. The next year that the AFC has got the extra home game is 2025. And I'm already looking at the opponents. And you look, look, you just know the Rooney family can, can pick up the phone and ring whoever, but their home opponents are superb. It's the AFC North and the NFC North and an AFC South team. Those are the home games in that season, which could be interesting. There was no other additional, and for people listening in the UK, there was no other additional teams added to the UK market, apart from the Steelers who got both Northern Ireland and the Republic. Northern Ireland geographically been in the UK, but there was no other team there. Saints getting France, which is an obvious poll, Jeff, and the Falcons in Germany. So um, a, Fran a French game would be nice, wouldn't it? It could be interesting. Yeah, and I think again, you know, you, you look around and Paris now has a professional team in the EFL, the uh, mm. European Football League that it started about three or four years ago. And, you know, they won their first game and you know, there was a lot of interest around that. Uh, obviously, the sport in France has been big for a long time. The French, is, the French were the first to establish uh, national academies for American football. Uh, it's, it's supported by the French Olympic Committee as Olympic, potential Olympic sports. There are tremendous athletes in France. Uh, you know, there it's interesting too because France has a rugby history. So again, tackle football is just a natural outgrowth of those you know, the rugby culture. And you know, obviously, a game in Paris would be huge. And again, that's a, that's a city that can handle you know the the uh, all of the logistics of you know, a major sporting event like an NFL football game. So, you know, the Saints, and again, the, the fleur de lis on the helmet and all of it, it is really, truly a great, great, you know, partnership that I see happening between France and the Saints. And, you know, again, you go to Louisiana, you go to South Louisiana where the Saints are, you know, uh, 
ICOM and you hear French, you know, they still speak Cajun French in, in South Louisiana. So again, it's just a natural thing. The globe is shrinking and, you know, the, the NFL understands that and understands that the marketing can't just be in the United States. It has to be, it has to be global. I, I, we're seeing it even in our league, Mike. We, mm. You know, right now, any fan that would like to can live stream CFL games for free. And that's because our league knows it needs to get out and, you know, compete for the international market. And certainly we're never going to be the NFL, but it, it does provide fans an opportunity through the summer to see football, to see players that they may have been fans of as college players or players in the NFL. And, you know, it, it, it's the two leagues are really and historically have been so intertwined. Just a matter. I was reading yesterday about Shane Ray, who has a, you know, has a world championship ring with the Broncos and was the 23rd player picked in the draft and had you know, struggled with injuries through his career and, you know, came up to Canada and just went much like Doug Flutie, came up to Canada, got himself healthy, reestablished his love for football and is now, you know, down in training camp with the Buffalo Bills. So, you know, I, I think, I think fans, will be pleasantly surprised when they watch this game and see see the level of talent that's leaving. Obviously, the very, very best of luck to you starting off season 10th of June, our time, 1.30 in the morning. You can watch that on CFL Plus, I think, and I'll just double check while Jeff is talking in a minute, but I think it's also on BT Sport. I'm not fully sure on that, but I will double check on that just at some point. Um, however, you're playing the Blue Bombers, Jeff. That's going to be interesting. Are, yeah, are we'll, all be, set? We'll, well, we're not set yet. Today's the first day we're going to start the preparation, but um, they're a great football team. They, they've, uh, you know, they've won two Grey Cups in the last three years and were a block field goal away from winning three straight. And three straight in professional football is really, really difficult to do. I mean, you look around and see how long has it been since we've had a team win three straight. And I think you've got to go – Man, I don't know. We got to have the Patriots done it. I know that the Cowboys did it. Steelers have done it, but winning three straight is really difficult. And that's the kind of football team they have. So on the road, they're going to hoist their Grey Cup championship banner, all that stuff. We're going to have to deal with all that. So you know, so again, it's uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, well, very, very best of luck to you, as we will see. There is free CFL all season long on that CFL Plus, so just check it out. It is on there. I don't think it's on BT anymore, so if it is, I'll let people know, but like you can literally watch it on there, so enjoy it, folks. We've got a few questions before we wrap up here, Jeff. Um, all right. We've got Dots from England, who got the first question on Twitter for fair play in the house of form. What are the key attributes a player needs to excel on special teams? I want to give a shout-out to Tag who went over to the States in the last week, uh, tag leader with Ross, who was on your show in Dublin, Jeff. Um, he's got, I, I can't say a certain place, but he's got like over five offers, apparently, like multiple offers. So that is incredible. But uh, what are the key, uh, for you, what are the key attributes that somebody needs to excel? Well, well let me, before we get to that question, I want to I want to talk about that situation with Tag and, mm. and uh, you know, Ross Bolger, who, we had on the, our tour with us and, you know, did a great job. You know, Tag, I think I'm really proud of him for what he's done because obviously when he made the move from rugby to become a kicker and had an opportunity to kick in the spring league and he kicked for us up in the CFL, you know, he had an opportunity to make a dent as a professional player. He recognizes how difficult it is and how you need to be shepherded through that path because it's, I mean, it's tough. It's highly competitive. It's you know very very difficult to 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 get an opportunity. And what he what he has done for Roth, taking him to the states, getting him opportunities to kick in front of people. The talent that Russ Bolger has is evident. All you got to do is see him kick, but. You know, when you don't have the opportunity to do it live for somebody, it's difficult. So they invested in the kid's future, and he performed extremely well when he was on his little mini tour that they did out here. I know my friends at Idaho State, they 
would love to have him there. I think that'd be a great, that'd be the great place for him to kick because he'll be kicking in an indoor stadium. And, you know, obviously when you're a kicker, it, kicking in that kind of environment is certainly the best kind of environment you can kick in. But regardless, he's going to, he's going to have an opportunity to chase his college football dream and his professional football dream. And, and hats off the tag for, for, for what he's done, not only for Ross, but for every kid coming up through the pipeline, because as these guys get out and they perform at a high level, it makes it easier for the next kid. It makes it easier. You know, when we sent Sebastian Vollmer to, to the University of Houston, you know, it was on faith, really. And then he was able to, he was able to take that opportunity and become a second round, third round draft choice, and then have a great career in New England and win two Super Bowls and be the right tackle for Tom Brady. And now he's trans, transformed all of that into, you know, a life after football. But now it's easier for the next kids. And that's, that's what I think is so great about that. The question about special teams, when I, I think, you know, the number one attribute is not a physical attribute that I think a guy needs to be an outstanding special teams player. It's the unselfishness that it takes to perform a job that is really thankless. And, you know, we have a saying in our meeting room, if you want credit, go to the bank because you're not going to get credit for what you do here. And, you know, when you think about how football at every level is a game of field position and it's a game of, you know, answering, you know, when things are going bad, offense goes three and out, what happened? You got to send the punt team on to reclaim the field position. So we're like special forces units. And the number one attribute of those kind of guys is you have to be unselfish and you got to be able to put the team first. The physical attributes that I look for are, you know, number one, speed, number two, length, number three, physical toughness, uh, because you're talking about high speed collisions and, you know, it's dirty work. I mean, it is tough, hard, dirty work. And there, it's not for everybody. And, you know, luckily, you luckily, thank you. <laughs> I you appreciate like it. it. It's a bacon sauce <laughs> Thank you. Come here. With, with Sarah Ann, come here. That is a, that is our, our audience all over the world. So oh, thank okay. you. Okay. There we go. Appreciate it. <laughs> this how about this that, show Bruce? was how about a big Jeff. Good unsolicited unsolicited <laughs> but i think you know going back to the question it's it's dirty work it's hard it's it's dangerous it's mm. but it's special you know and that's why they call it special teams and i and i really love it i love the guys that play it a guy from the uk called good this twitter is called good teams win good teams cover i think he follows you jeff thanks for the question sleeper super bowl pick chargers I, you know what? I know that that's a that's a popular one. I say it every but year, I, Jeff, and hope that eventually it gets right. You know, just gonna keep saying. Yeah, saying. you know, you know. I think there's other teams that, if they get hot, can do it. You know, I don't want to put the curse on them because uh, certainly they <laughs> they were my first team I loved, and I'll always love them. But it's just I keep thinking that if those Lions stay healthy and kind of get hot at the end you're in the nfc it's not a great division and if you can just find a way you know to get into the playoffs and you know here's the deal with the playoffs and <laughs> i'm gonna my buddy jim mora playoffs but uh when you get in the playoffs you're talking about 60 minutes right it's 60 minutes and there's so many things that can happen. So you got to win the first, you got to win the first 60 minutes. Then you go to the next 60 minutes in the next game and then the next 60 minutes. And all of a sudden you're in the big one, right? That's what makes the playoffs so much fun. And we've seen teams make those kinds of runs. And I think that, you know, are you healthy? Are you confident? Do you get a little magic? Do you get a bounce of the ball, a break, an official call or whatever? And, you know, so I think 
the NFC, if there's going to be a surprise team, a sleeper team, I think it's going to be an NFC team. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, we'll talk about this in, in, in August. I, I would love to find a way to properly do a proper preview you in person. I think it's unlikely, but I will try. Um, I think we're set up for a repeat already. I really do. I don't. I I don't want to be boring, but I, I think we're going to have a repeat already next year. Just have a feeling. Well, you know, you, it, it, I think there's a lot of reasons why everybody thinks that's a great possibility. Because you're talking about two great quarterbacks, you're talking about two great organizations, two great general managers, two great talented football teams that have depth and have weapons all over the field. But this game's a funny game, and you look at the history especially the last 40 years of the national football league and there haven't been a lot of repeats you know and so there's a reason for that that's exactly the way the nfl wants it and they want everybody to have a chance until i think what we're going to find out michael is as we go through the season and i am really excited to get back this guy mm. uh, at thanksgiving and through the end of the through the end of the Super Bowl. But I think what we're going to find is we're going to go down to the last weekend with not only positioning, you know, seating at stake, but playoff berths at stake. And I, and I certainly that's the way the league, that's the league wants it because you keep the interest all the way through the season. Well, I'm excited for you to be back on Sky, please God. And they, you know, once that happens, I've, I've no doubt that we'll get you around Ireland at the very, very least. So that, that's that's the plan. And I already had a lot of people asking that. Um, if you're on Sky, you're you're coming with us to Vegas. So that that that's that that's the hope. That's the plan. Here's <laughs> hey, the last hey, question. I, I go for go, it. Go for when, when we go on tour this time, right? Mm. And I'm because I'm always a I'm always a glass half full guy, and so I'm gonna say, when we get back there and we go on tour, we gotta expand a little bit. You know, obviously we'll do Belfast and Dublin again, but you know that there are pockets of fans all around Ireland that, you know, love the sport. And we need to, we need to, we need to get to Scotland. We need to get through the UK. Yeah. And wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun to go to, you know, to uh, the continent and do a tour through, do a tour through France and Germany and Holland and Spain and everywhere else where they love football? I would say watch this space, but I, you know, and I'm sure people are listening to this, not just in Ireland or watching this, but in, in the UK also. I think that's a great possibility. And, and I think that's something that can be done, especially um, before or after Christmas, N not just around Super Bowl time. I think there can be stuff that's done around then as well. So, you know, certainly that's something that I'm interested in doing. And it's certainly something that I would like to see happen for you as well. So, you know, let's, Let's see what we can do this season. It's it's going to be a big season. It's already a big season with stuff obviously going on here with the Steelers and stuff for us. So we're, we're obviously, obviously very excited for the, the growth here. So I've got a guy from Ireland, from Ashburn and County Mead with the last question here. Rory Fitzgerald, if you're up for answering this, Jeff, Rory's put a yeah. question. Can you discuss and explain the changes to the kickoff rule or fair catch at the 25 for people that are new to the sport? <laughs> yes, and I'm going to tell you something. And all my buddies in the NFL, all my special team buddies in the NFL, it was unanimous amongst the special teams coaches in the NFL to fight this rule. And at the at the league meetings, uh, they actually lobbied against this rule because they see it as another step by the league to neuter the kicking game in the National Football League. You know, the return game now with the you know with the advent of so many Aussie kickers who punters who can do so much with the football you know you're seeing less and less balls return and the NFL wants to do the same thing with the kickoff right they so they've adopted kind of a quasi college rule and I know from being at the University of Hawaii last year I, I was just shocked at the difference like teams are kicking the ball off and everybody's fair catching the ball so they can get the ball at 25. Like I, and I'm watching the, one of the most dynamic plays in football, which is the return kick return and punt return being phased out of the game. And I, I don't like it. I don't, I, I'm like all the other guys that I talk to. I think it's, I think it's silly. I think it's, you know, it's, 
to be right honest with you, Mike, and, and speak as frank as I can speak, I think the kicking game is being is being used as a way for the league to say, well, it's a player safety issue. But, you know, wait a second now. How many guys are hurt on kickoffs as compared, you know, again, don't change the game, right? And I and I, I get it with players say, I get it, right? I get it, you know, and they're concerned about lawsuits and all of that, but I just don't like it. I don't like it. So basically, here's the rule. If you fair catch the ball inside the 10, you get the ball at the 25 as opposed to the 20 on a touchback, right? What I think they're going to find, and this is what you got to be careful of, teams want to win, right? That's bottom line. They want to win. And so now what I think you'll see is more pooch kicks and sky kicks and, you know, because the kickers are so good with the ball off their foot now. You lay one up there at that lands at the 15, right? Mm-hmm. And it's got 4.2 hang time on it. Well, you're going to have more high speed collisions than less high speed collisions. And, you know, because you can't fair catch it outside of that restraining line. And, you know, I, th- I, I know that that was the position that most of the special teams coaches took when this thing got pushed through at the owners' meeting. So, they did it as a on a one year trial basis, but I think it I think it's probably with us for good now, and and we just have to adjust to it because you know the the competition committee and the and the people who make the rules don't like to say they made a mistake. I will say this, and thus I'll say no more because I think sometimes, and I think what you said is perfect there because it's, we can be very positive, but we can also give our opinions, right? I think that's that's the beauty of this sport, beauty of this league. I don't like the flexing rule on Thursday Night Football. I think it's not, like I, I understand why they've done it, but if me or you book a, book a flight and book a holiday to go, over, to, 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 to go to a game, it's expensive enough for somebody in the States to get a flight and go somewhere four or five hours on the plane. For us, I get, is it like, is it, is it nine or, or is it like three or four weeks or something they have? They, they can say this is going to be flex or something. I just, I don't like the rule, personally. I think I, they should have had one or two max, but not, you know. I'm with you. And I think that that's, again, where we, you know, as as consumers, which is what we are, you know, we're important to the national football year. There's no question about that because we're there, you know, we're the ones who pay the ticket prices and all that stuff. And, you know, television, when we have to be real about this, television, it's not, it's not the fan in the stands that drives the game. Mm. It's television and those billion dollar television contracts that they have. And so the league will and should, because it's about, it's an economic issue. They're going to bend to the whims of the broadcasters. And it's, that's just our reality. And I don't like it either, Mike, for a lot of reasons. Um, but you, the one you mentioned is particularly, you know, particularly sensitive issue amongst European fans that want to come and travel to see games in the States. The thing is, like, the Thursday night stuff has been fantastic and it's taken it to a new level. It has. So as long as you don't do too much, it's fine, I think. But it's it's like, you know, I, I have had people message me about it and it's, it's something that I feel strongly about also. Right, you're the most busiest man in Hamilton at the minute. When are we going to talk again, do you think? Anytime you want. Let's, let's talk, I, you know, again, obviously the schedule's a little more, you know, a little more normal now that we're, you know, we're out of training camp. Training camp is is just the grind but you know we'll, we'll make time to talk this week yeah it's always great to to sit down and as we say chop it up and uh you know with with you and communicate with the fans around the world and uh, you know it's been a lot of fun and we'll continue to make it a lot of fun i had I, and this is going to be a great one we're going to bring for you patriot fans dietrich wise jr one of your great pass rushers and a you know, real good Patriot. Uh, his father, Dietrich Sr., played for me. And there's, a, they have an, there's another brother who's playing for the commanders. So 
Commander fans. Uh, we're going to get the, the Wise Clan on this show, and we're going to talk about, unpack their football story and what it's like, Dietrich, to have two sons playing in the NFL and, and uh, you know, uh, listen to Dietrich Jr. talk a little bit about Fortress Patriot and, uh, and you know, we'll talk about the Commanders. It'll be fun. It'll be a really, really good show. I, I, I definitely look forward to that. And I know we're, especially in July, August, we're going to have a lot more content coming out. Uh, for anyone looking to watch these back, I know they're on Twitter. They're also on the Pro Football Ireland YouTube channel on the second row. It says Jeff Ryan Bolshoi. You can click in and watch every episode, including uh, Jeff speaking to some great guests, both pre and post draft. But um, we're getting there. Best luck in your first game if we're not talking before that. But I know we, we probably will be if something happens in the league this week. Uh, for people listening, Jeff, obviously they can get if they search Jeff Reinbold and their podcast provider um, at Jeff underscore Reinbold at LFL Ireland for us as well. Um, I will talk to you soon, my man. All right, my brother. Take care. Aloha. Aloha.